You're listening to an audio article by the Common Constitution. Today's audio article is entitled, The Right to Assemble in Church. Last Friday, a Los Angeles County Superior Court judge granted Los Angeles churchgoers the right to worship inside the Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, despite Governor Gavin Newsom's draconian restrictions. Quote, Superior Court Judge Gregory Alarcon, I suppose, ruled that Los Angeles County-based Grace Community Church can continue to hold indoor services as long as worshipers wear face mask coverings and practice social distancing, unquote, writes The Blaze. For many conservatives, this was hailed as a major victory, striking a legal blow at the heart of the radical anti-religion left. Well, I guess in one sense it kind of is, if one only considers the case superficially. But looking at the situation through a constitutionalist lens, even a common one, <laughs> get it? It's only a partial win. And, might I add, this is the only way one should look at this. The First Amendment states that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. As an aside, and with little imagination, one can see that freedom of assembly is closely associated with the freedom of speech which the left holds so dear, don't you know? Either one, without the other, is at the very least less effective. However, some may say, well, that's just for the federal government. This is about the states, don't you know? And to that I would say, enter the 14th Amendment. Quote, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property, Unquote. I would call this a deprivation of liberty, wouldn't you? Need more convincing? Enter Article 6, Section 2, Quote, this Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land, unquote. And judges, county, state, or federal, including the Supreme Court, can neither grant citizens rights, take them away, nor hinder them in any way. Our rights proclaimed in the Constitution are not bequeathed to us by any governmental authority. Because of this, they cannot be allowed to be tampered with. No one's idea of safety can usurp my natural rights expressed in the Constitution, period. The governor of the state of California has subverted the United States Constitution. None of the governors or mayors have any right to usurp the U.S. Constitution under any circumstances. And before anyone says that this wasn't a law in California, it was merely a temporary mandate, let me stop you right there. If it carries the force of law, which this did, it's treated the same way. In addition, the Constitution is the rule book for government, the public sector. It was written and intended to stop at the water's edge, so to speak. By water's edge, I mean that the Constitution was designed to stop at the line where public meets private, it is why the anti-federalists like my hero George Mason insisted that a Bill of Rights be added to the Constitution. And we can see why, and we can maybe imagine what it would be like without it. It is why this ruling wasn't an overwhelming win. Yes, this was a good ruling by the judge, almost. But even he went on to attach conditions to the citizens' right to free assembly by insisting they still wear masks and social distance. He, too, has no authority to dictate what citizens do, how many may congregate, or what they must wear on private property. So he, too, is in breach of the Constitution. Thank you for listening.